If you've built a pivot table from an Excel range before, then you've probably started out with some sort of table similar to this sales table here, built around a business relating to a bike retailer for something new and different. So to build your pivot table, you click somewhere in the range, insert pivot table, existing worksheet, there. OK. A bit of drag and drop and we've taken the sales table on the left and summarized it in the form on the right currently by product group, by country, and we're filtering on month. Incidentally, if you haven't used pivot tables, then you should take a look at David Carter's pivot table tutorials in Excel Zone on Accounting Web. As flexible as pivot tables are in terms of letting you switch around rows and columns, they do have some restrictions in the sense that you can't move parts of a pivot table. For example, if I try to insert a column, then I get an error message that tells me in no uncertain terms that I can't do that. This can be limiting if you're trying to lay out a report in a certain specific way. Now, if you have Excel 2010 or Excel 2013 and you have Power Pivot installed, then you have the option of a slightly different approach. What you do then is click somewhere in the Excel range that contains your data. Click on Power Pivot tab, Create Link Table, and My Table has headers. This brings you into the Power Pivot window or manager, where there's now a table called a linked table that, as the name suggests, is linked to the Excel table that we're just working with. And if we go back to Excel for a second, this means that any changes that we make in the table, when we do update all, will be reflected in the Power Pivot table. I'm just going to format these two columns. As you can see, it's quite Excel-like. And now I'll create a pivot table and put it there. So with a bit more drag and drop, we end up with a pivot table that looks identical to the one that we created earlier directly from the Excel range. This pivot table created from Power Pivot has a different sort of field list from the classic field list which I've arranged side by side. Those differences aren't important for now. What is important though is that when you click on the regular pivot table and you're on the options tab of the pivot table tools, the OLAP tools drop down is disabled, it's grayed out. Whereas with the pivot table created from Power Pivot, you do have the option of converting that to formulas. Your report is still live linked to the Power Pivot model. You can choose different months. And if you click on formulas and trace precedents, you can see that these cube value functions are driven by parameters in the surrounding cells, typically column headers, row labels, and report filters. And if you're missing a country such as Mexico, and you want to place it above Netherlands, you can copy Netherlands, insert copied cells, and then just edit that to be Mexico. And you are no longer prohibited from inserting rows or columns in your report. So I can insert a column here and I can grab these countries here and cut them, stick them there. As before, this all remains live linked to your Power Pivot model. So you have a lot more flexibility to lay out your financial and management reports exactly the way you want them. Back in Power Pivot, there are functions that help you manipulate, query, and an analyze data. These are called DAX functions, data analysis expressions. Here's one that I'm using to summarize all the reporting journal entries, the, the credit entries, that are being applied to this account, to this entity, on this date. And I think you'll find that if you invest time to become more familiar with it, this environment is a much better and more robust place to do this kind of data manipulation 
far better than doing it in a worksheet.